Welcome back to another Mech Deck Tech. Today we're looking to upgrade Hosts of Mordor from Lord of the Rings. This deck focuses on recurring creatures from our grave, amassing large armies, and having the ring tempt us. Before we dive on in, if you're enjoying the upgrade guides and deck techs, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that bell so you never miss an upload. We have a first for the channel in the form of swapping the commander. And not only are we swapping the commander, but it's for a card not in the precon. Sauron the Dark Lord is taking the place of Sauron, Lord of the Rings. We're leaning heavy into that amassed mechanic, and the Dark Lord is going to get us there. So which cards didn't make the cut? We're starting off with Basalt Monolith. This man rock has a ton of combo potential, and on a complete rebuild would likely get to stay, but since we're only swapping out 12 cards, it just doesn't fit the theme. Boon of the Witchgiver is a very expensive draw card that would be better suited for a deck focused around cycling. Uh, so it's just, it's not for me. It's not hanging out. In a similar vein, we have Deep Analysis. It's just too pricey to uh, justify hanging out with us. Goblin Crater Maker would have us pay 3 to uh, just deal 2 damage to a creature or destroy a colorless non-land permanent, likely a mana rock. While the effect is decent, it's not exactly what we're going for. And again, if we were going to lean more heavily into, like, recursion, they might stay, right? It's repeated removal of mana rocks, artifacts, small creatures, but that's just not the case here. In the Darkness Bind Them could be powerful if we were leaning more into, like, the race. And it basically guarantees that we've been fully tempted if we're doing a complete rebuild. It would certainly stay. But with this like slight upgrade guide, we're just really kind of focusing on a mass as a mechanic, and so it just doesn't make the cut. Lord of the Nazgul's is in a similar spot. I think a Wraith Commander theme could be powerful, and may even be something that I build in the future. But it's not furthering our mass, and for that reason, it's not really going to stay. Mindstone is another mana rock that I don't think we need. I know that mana rocks are good, and I keep taking them out in these upgrade guides, but our deck curves out around 4 mana, and the Mind Stone just isn't powerful enough to warrant staying. Rampaging War Mammoth is a big boy, who you're meant to cycle and recur from the grave, and would make a lovely addition to my Slimefoot and Squee deck, which I've already done a video on. But just doesn't fit the MS mechanic. Shiny Impetus is actually pretty good value for what it costs. We're protecting ourselves from a creature, getting a treasure per round, but there are powerful combos in the deck that need space. Siege Gang Commander is another cannon fodder style card, and if we're leaning into Recursion, we'll definitely have a seat at the table, but since we're not, they don't get to stay. The Balrog of Moria uh, also wants to lean into Recursion Cycling. And, you know, it's just, again, it's not what we're doing. We're leaning into a mass. So, Balrog, get on out of here. Lastly, and honestly kind of the easiest cut, is the troll of, I'm going to butcher this name, Kaz... Kazad Doom? Kazad Doom. Probably butchering that. Sorry, Lord of the Rings fans. Ah, uh, but yeah. I mean, you know, it's less that they require three blockers. Sure, we could land, cycle them away, but it's just not enough to justify keeping them. Who's taking their place? Well, we've already revealed Sauron the Dark Lord, who will have us amass it quickly, and if we can get tempted by the ring, draw ourselves a lot of cards. Eternal Skylord will add zombies to our army, and give it flying getting past most blockers. Gleaming Overseer joins the fray to also add zombie element and grant Hexproof Menace to our army. Riona Fire Dancer is going to create temporary copies of our creatures to reward us for casting instants and sorceries. Widespread Brutality is going to keep the zombies in the army and potentially wipe the rest of the field, allowing us to hit hard. And Tomb is here really just to grab our copy of Anger, throw it in the grave, granting all of our creatures haste. Helm of the Host is a powerful combo piece and can recur some of our ETB triggers. The Fairy's Puzzle Box is going to allow us to kind of cycle through our deck quickly and has a nasty little combo to stifle our opponents. We'll go over it at the end. Book of Mazarbol. It's definitely how you pronounce it. Crushing it. Uh, it will create us an army. Grant them a smidge of power, but more importantly, we'll grant all of our creatures menace for the turn. Dreadhorde Invasion is going to keep us amassing each turn at the cost of one life, but will eventually grant us a massive army, our massive army lifelink, keeping our heads above water. 
Love Care Andros is repeatable, albeit expensive removal, but pairs really well with Blasphemous Act and Widespread Brutality to create a truly beefy army quickly. Our final change comes in the form of March in the Black Gate, allowing us to amass every round we swing in with our army. Let's get back to our roots with the three R's. Ramp, Removal, Reactions. Cavern Horde Dragon will almost never cost us nine to actually play. And though we aren't focused on recursion from the grave, we still have some recursion in the deck. This powerful dragon is going to create a ton of treasures for us when it connects, and with Flying and Trample, it will connect often. Aside from our dragon, we're really relying on mana rocks to ramp. But we do have Arcane Signet, Commander Sphere, Everflowing Chalice, Relic of Sauron, Soul Ring, and the Worn Power Stone. Looking into removal, Merciless Executioner can sack itself to its effect and force each opponent to sack a creature as well. Slapping the helm of the host on him, assuming of course that you didn't sack him to his own effect, will force each opponent to sack a creature in each of our combat steps. Voracious Fell Beast is in a similar camp, only it doesn't need to sack itself, and it's going to grant to us a little bit of food. The food's not super important in this stack, but like, could be handy. Blasphemous Axe is a powerful board wipe, and if we could hold out until our army is large enough to survive it, you know, everyone else will be sitting ducks, and we'll have a big beefy boy still. The Degree of Pain won't spare our army, but will let us draw a lot of cards, and could be cycled away to deal with a go-wide strategy. Feed the Swarm lets us trade life for a little destruction. Languish is going to wipe most of the board, but not all of the board, right? Especially because we have a lot of bigger, beefier creatures that could survive this but our opponents likely won't. Living Death will stomp on any opponent that's been running away with the game and recur any BP boys we've been, you know, forced to, uh, you know, kind of chump lock off or discard for value at some point. Too Greedy, Too Deep will uh, recur a creature and if it's powerful enough, just wipe most of the board for us. We've already touched on Widespread Brutality uh, but again, you know, it's just a nice way for us to beef up our army, wipe most if not all the board, swing in with massive power. Bitter Downfall is going to let us pop a creature and ping someone for you know, just a little too life, but you know, little damage, little destruction, I like it. Fall of Care Andros is our final piece of removal we've already touched on, and yes, the repeatable removal aspect is a little expensive, costing 8 to deal 7, but if we have excess mana and nothing else to do with it, you know, popping a creature that has, you know, up to 7 toughness, still pretty good. As far as reactions go, this deck is actually kind of lacking. We really only have Arcane Denial, and that's about it. You know, we have other instants, but they're not really reacting in a way that's going to save us. So, you know, definitely a, uh, a short straw amongst all of our stuff. But I mentioned this deck has some potent combos, so let's take a look at what they are. We're going to start off with our Notion Thief. Uh, so whenever an opponent would draw a card, except for the first one, they draw on each of their draw steps. Instead, the player skips a draw step, and in fact, we draw cards. You know it, you love it, it's Teferi's Puzzle Box. So at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player puts all the cards in their hand at the bottom of their library in any order, and then draws that many cards. So the way this combo works is, beginning of their draw step, they draw their card, Teferi's Puzzle Box triggers, taking their entire hand, putting it to the bottom of their library, and allowing them to draw new cards. But... Notion Thief is like, hey, you've already drawn your card for turn. You can't have those. And instead, we draw a bunch of cards. We're going to have a lot of options in our hand. You definitely want to have something that's going to give you an infinite hand size if you're going to play this combo. Uh, but there are options out there. You know what they are. Next up, we have Scourge of the Throne. 
Uh, so it has flying and dethrown. Whenever it scourges a throne, it attacks for the first time each turn. If it's attacking the player with the most life, or tied for the most life, we're going to untap all of our attacking creatures, get an extra combat step. This is, of course, where Helm of the Host comes into play. So we have Helm of the Host out. We have our Scourge of the Throne out. We equip him. Start of combat, we get to create a copy of him. We swing out, hit uh, the opponent that has the most life with the copy. We untap everything. We have another combat step. New combat step, new Helm of Host trigger. We create a new copy, rinse and repeat. If they can't stop him, kill him, do something on the spot, we will just win. In a very similar vein, we have Riona Fire Dancer. This does require that we we cast an instant or sorcery on our turn to get her trigger. But we use her trigger, we create copies of Skirt of the Throne. And again, at the beginning of each of our combats, it's just gonna it's gonna rinse and repeat itself for us. The final combo we have for you is not quite the infinite combos that we generally go for. You know, you could argue it's more just high synergy. But, fall off care, Andros. So whenever a creature and opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, we get to amass X orcs. Where X is the amount of damage dealt. Blasphemous Act is going to deal 13 to every creature. So again, we want to wait until our... Our army is nice and big. You know, we play Blasphemous Act. Most creatures are nowhere near 13 toughness, right? You see some 3s, some 4s, maybe even some 5s. So, like, per creature, we're seeing a mass 8 plus. So, our army is left standing. It's massive. It's going to swing out and just, you know... Take out a player in one hit. A very similar vein, Widespread Brutality does the same thing, right? We're amassing two. We're hitting a bunch of creatures for damage. We're getting beefier because of it. But guys, that's a deck. Uh, do you like the extra details in the form of the three R's and the combos being included in this? Did you prefer the short and sweet and to the point kind of format? Are there cards that I took out that you think should have stayed in? Are there cards that I missed when adding in new ones? And until next time, guys, good luck with those builds.